Space is Sims, and we are back with more of The Sims for Kindred Spirits. And we are with Cyrus and Abel today, because we're going to get a little more about them. How are you doing? Ooh. You guys are actually both pretty good. Okay. Well, because, you know, vampire and a mermaid. Um, <clears throat> oh, gosh, she's spirits. I think it's actually really funny that there's the rules to the bathhouse in this room. <laughs> actually hilarious like here's how lockers work that's so funny um so we don't have too too much like more backstory with them because again like i said in the last part sometimes i forget how much did i actually tell you versus i just remember reading this a million times so if i'm repeating things yeah there's some awkward shit going on here if i'm repeating things just you know whatevs consider it a you know refresher i guess so anyway in regards to cyrus um we kind of know you know that he spends most of his time outdoors that he collects all sorts of like rocks and he's kind of the local gemologist in a way like a lot of the townsfolk rely on him for that kind of knowledge and things like that um and he kind of spends a lot of his time alone and He's got trust issues, and a lot of people think he's kind of lazy. Because he's, you know, he's supposed to be narcoleptic, but we had to get rid of our custom traits because of whatever. What was it? It was uh, the... Uh, Gerba Warble. One of the yeah. updates, and I don't know if they ever got fixed, and I never put them back in, so whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um... But, you know, he doesn't... He doesn't really want to voluntarily help, but he kind of does it anyway, because he's, like, goaded into it. Um, and he's also kind of the confidant that Abel trusts the most, you know, when he relies on his wisdom and guidance. And we, he is, as far as anyone knows, the oldest spirit. He's really not. Um, we know that that is actually Salem, but and most of the, like, spirits don't really know much about Salem, so they don't really know that he's the oldest. They look at... Cyrus as being the oldest as of the ones that they know of. You know what I mean? And now we went to bed, so we can't really follow him around and kind of tell you more of, so we'll just have to come back to what we were going to kind of tell you <laughs> go into Cyrus' stuff, but I guess we'll have to oh, skip over to Abel. I, I Cyrus was fine, and I was like, cool, we'll go with him first, because that's just where the camera went when I loaded in, so... Anyway, uh, I had to kind of reverse with Cyrus the things that I was going to tell you because I was like, wait, there was like one thing and I was like, after we kind of met Lachlan, like I mentioned in the last part with Lachlan, that like Lachlan and Cyrus kind of don't get along really well. There's like a weird, it's not that they don't get along, like they're friendly enough to each other, but Cyrus kind of is wary of Lachlan. So we'll kind of get, that's where we're going to go. I'd save that for later, but I'm like, no, we have to tell you that after we meet Lachlan before, because the next time we meet them, it would be, you know what I mean? So I had to reverse some stuff around anyway. Um, Cause it made more sense. Like, Oh, Hey, now we're popping in here. We might as well kind of give you that little background. So that's kind of what we'll get into when we uh, get to that. So, um, so here's the thing. I don't remember because uh, I've read this so much about Abel and I was like, I know we kind of went through that. Well, we know he's a master thief and he's the one on guru in the town and everybody kind of relies on him. Uh, you know, and he shares his knowledge with the townsfolk and just gives them just enough to kind of help them to make the right decisions on their own because he doesn't want to like, you know, he wants he doesn't want to like hand them all the information. You know, here, this is exactly how to make everything perfect. He's like, I will help you and guide you to make the choices, do this on your own. Not just because, hey, I don't want everyone to have a perfect advantage and it wouldn't, you wouldn't try and you wouldn't strive for anything if everything was handed to you, but I don't want them to like struggle and suffer. So he does what he can to help, but you know, you kind of have to, you have to succeed on your own in a way, you know? So we kind of already know that, um, and we know that he's the de facto leader of the spirits in the town because of his knowledge, wealth, and, you know, his mental stability, unlike Gail. You know, even though that, I think, I think Gail's okay with that. Like, I don't think Gail wants that responsibility, but Gail wants to want that responsibility. You know what I mean? Like, look, Gail's a strange, strange man, okay? 
He wants to be like, no, I should be the leader, but he knows that he couldn't handle it. So he's okay with letting Abel kind of run and take that responsibility and do everything. Even if he acts bitchy about it, even if he's like, well, whatever. He's secretly like, thank God. But to keep up appearances for himself, he's like, whatever. Should be me. Like, whatever, I guess. Freaking Abel, whatever. But secretly, like, thanks, is like thankful that Abel's there to do this because he knows he couldn't handle it and doesn't want the responsibility. But, like, it's a matter of pride, you know? So, anyway. Um,. So we kind of went all that, and I don't really know uh, if we went through that. I mean, we kind of said that he's a master thief, but he's basically, and I don't know if we went through this. So if we did go through this and I'm repeating it, I'm sorry, but like, refresher, I guess. Um, he's basically like Robin Hood. He, <laughs> like, but he steals valuable stolen objects um, and artifacts and he returns them to the rightful place. So basically, if someone is buying black market, like, stolen or, you know, lost artifacts, we'll kind of get to that, he'll basically steal it and leave it and bring it back to a museum or whatever. So think about it. Like, oh, hey, oh, no, this painting's been lost for centuries and people are trading it on the black market. He's like, you don't own that. That doesn't belong to you. He'll steal it and bring it back. But not like... Oh, I went and I bought the actual, I bought the Mona Lisa and I own it and cool. I'm going to put him at, you, you bought it legit. Somebody steals it and then sells it on the black market. He's going to take it and bring it back. Like, he's like, nah, we don't do that. But his motivation for doing that isn't like, oh, I just feel like art belongs to the people and we should have like, and the, you know, whatever. It's not that at all. He's doing that because a lot of, um, there's a lot of lost and stolen, like, occult spirit items so things that belonged to a lot of different spirit beings so like his people gail's people cyrus people like whatever um were stolen lost mostly stolen you know they say lost but it wasn't lost it was stolen during the war with the spellcasters so he's trying to get those back because they're very powerful artifacts some of it is just you know it would be like, oh, it was a family heirloom and it means something to my family. It might not have magical abilities, but there's a lot that do. And he is going around trying to <laughs> find these. So, and it's kind of like while he's, because he's a master thief, remember. So while he's out there looking for these artifacts and doing that, you know, he's kind of come across this, well, wait, this was said it was stolen from this person. I know you've got it in your secret. You know, fuck this shit. And he's kind of just... <laughs> He may be a thief, but he's still, I guess, good at heart. Like, I'm going to bring certain other things back to the rightful owners and in museums or the right, like, people who might have owned them because he kind of, I guess, empathizes with those people. Like, if you're a normal human and you had a really valuable piece of art that was stolen from you and the people are trading it on the black market and you don't know what happened, he's going to bring it back to you because he's like, I know what that feels like. And I've seen my own people suffer from all their stuff being stolen. Like, nah, fuck that shit. We're taking it back. Like, you know, so that's kind of how he got into, like, stealing normal artifacts and stuff. Plus, it kind of covers his tracks in a way, if you think about it. If he's stealing oh, artifacts, like, ones that have magical ability and belong to the spirits and ones that don't, it's harder to track, <laughs> especially for the spellcaster to be like, it's absolutely a spirit that's doing it. You know what I mean? Like, eventually someone if it was just these certain objects, might be able to put the pieces together and be like, wait, wait a minute. You know, and like, you'd have to be a brilliant detective, but who fucking knows, you know? We don't have one of those in this game, but you might. We might. We don't know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I did not make one, but you know what I mean? That would have been good. That would have been a good plot point, but like, look, whatever. Um, So it's kind of like, they're just like, oh, a lot of art and a lot of valuables and things that were stolen are coming back and it's like, I mean, you know, so he's kind of covering his tracks by getting these spellcaster items um, because uh, he wants to also, he's trying to get these because they don't belong out there in the world. They belong to the spirits, but he's also doing this threefold. The third reason for going out and stealing all these artifacts is not just, hey, I felt bad for the humans who lost their shit, so I'm going to return it which is going to cover my tracks from stealing the spirit items. 
but it also is going to help cover if I'm going for all of these. It looks like it's just a non-discerning person who's out there like, I'm just stealing art and giving it back where it belongs. And no one's going to report that missing. Like, hey, I had this lost artifact. I have a painting that got stolen from me, but I technically bought it on the black market and it was already stolen. Like, you're not going to come forward and say that. You know what I mean? But it's like this, where are these things mysteriously coming from? And huh, like they know, like the cops obviously know, like mm, this piece magically appeared. Someone either had it or was probably sold on the black market and like stolen and no one's going to come forward. And like, there's no way to catch him if you think about it. But um, his other thing that he's doing while he's out there Robin Hooding, right, is stealing spellcaster items as well. So when he's out there looking for the spirit items to bring back, and then just out of the goodness of his heart, getting some human artifacts back to the rightful owners, he's actually hunting down spellcaster items too. Because the spirit items that might just have like, there might be family heirlooms or sentimental value. Great. That's just, you're bringing them back the same with the human artifacts, right? It's just, it's about giving them back to the rightful owners. And for him, it's a matter of pride. These belong to our people. You know, whatever. The magical artifacts is we need them back because they help the spirits with their magical ability. Like, obviously, they're dangerous artifacts for other people to have. Like, especially humans who don't know how to use them. Or in spellcaster hands, right? So it's the same reason he takes the spellcaster items. If the spellcasters get their hands on these magical artifacts that belong to their people... You know, that's more power in their hands, and the war did not go well, and he knows in his mind, especially now, like, he's been doing this for a while, like, ever since the war happened and everything, he's been out there, like, getting, the, knowing this could happen again, and I'm going to prevent it by taking as much of the spellcaster's magical abilities with these objects that are out there and hiding them on them, so that... We are making ourselves stronger by getting our artifacts back, but keeping those other ones from them. So he's trying to tip the scales here. Um, especially with Raiden coming into town. I know Yuki in town and everything like that. Like, oh, spellcasters are doing some shit. I don't know what they're doing. And I think that's kind of why he started the romantic relationship with Yuki. Like, oh, we're going to be friends. And then flirting a little and like, whatever, you know, sure, it's fine. I can flirt with him because he's attractive. I'm like, whatever. I don't think he actually intended to fall in love with Yuki. But he did. You know? And and I think that kind of could be a point of contention with some of the other spirits. Like, um, hey, Abel, so like, you know, you were you were just messing with him and stuff, but you're really in love with him, and you better not be blinded by that. And if he's doing shady shit, you know, we don't care. We'll fucking kill your boyfriend. You know what I mean? Like, like we'll take him out. We don't care. But it's like this, like, people are kind of wary. And I feel like Cyrus is the one that would keep him on track, you know? And I think that's also kind of why Lachlan goes over and sees Yuki a lot, too. Because Lachlan's, like, Cyrus is going to be a little more protective of Abel and be like, mm. like, yeah, I like Yuki and he's nice, but... I don't know if we can trust him. Like, he's still a spellcaster. You know what I mean? And he's been hiding it from us. He doesn't tell us that he is. Which, they don't tell him that they're fucking Ayakashi spirits, right? Like, like if you were a fucking witch or a wizard, you're like, look, I remember the Salem witch trials, bitch. I ain't telling anybody shit. I'm not being burned at, a, at the stake. And knowing the war and the things, you're not going to be like, yeah, no, I'm a spellcaster. Just like the Ayakashi spirits aren't like walking up to random people being like, look! Look what I am underneath. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a vampire's not going to tell you they're a vampire. You're going to find out by accident, right? Have you ever watched any movie or TV show with vampires? Like, there's a million of them. And, like, do they just walk up like, Sup, vampire? You know, no. No. Like, the Ayakashi spirits amongst themselves tell each other who they are. That doesn't matter. Like, everybody knows. They can sense each other and they know. But, like, spellcasters would totally, like, Oh, hey, you're a spellcaster? I'm a spellcaster. But you're not going to walk up to some random fucking stranger. You know what I mean? We're not vegans here. It's not like you're going to walk up like, oh my god, hi, I'm a vegan. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. We didn't ask. It's not like that. <laughs> I know not all vegans are like that. I'm just talking about the crazy ones. I'm sorry if you're vegan, but you know there's some crazy ones who just feel like they need to tell everyone that they're vegan. You're like, that's awesome. I'm not like, hi, I'm Spacey. 
Um, I like to cook with rice. Oh. Like, oh. Yeah. I love pizza. Like, that's just not oh. like it's not my identity. Anyway, oh. so they're not gonna, just gonna like blatantly tell people, but huh. but yeah. So he's getting those ah. spellcaster items to kind of help keep the spellcasters weaker so that he prevents them from killing his people, you know? Um, the only person, like, aside from really, like, Cyrus kind of knows, but they don't talk about it. Cyrus is like, well, I don't, you do you. It's cool. I'm just over here. Like, Cyrus is, I think, the secret keeper for Abel, even though they don't talk about it, he knows, but it's not. Yeah. The only person who really freaking knows is Orion. Orion knows that Abel is a thief, knows his mission regarding all these magical artifacts and what he's doing with them, because Orion has a knowledge of the artifacts. Um, he has a knowledge of their history. He has a knowledge of their powers. Um, and he know like, like Abel can sense these artifacts. Like he can sense like there's something here that's powerful. Um, but Orion knows how to basically capture them because you can't just like, I'm just going to go grab and pick it up. Especially the spellcaster ones. Like they would obviously like humans don't know how to use these, you know, it'd probably be fine. Like a human picked up. Oh, it's this orb. This thing's cool. It's like, look, it's like a nice paperweight, like whatever, but they're going to have more protections on them against other magical beings like Aikashi spirits. So Orion kind of knows the history and can, Fig and like their powers and knows how to quote unquote capture them. Like this is what you need to do in order to be able to get your hands on that and kind of lock its powers. So one, they can hide it. The spellcasters can't find it. They probably have a secret vault somewhere. Who knows? Um, and so that it doesn't curse Abel for touching it. You know what I mean? So kind of like there was the curse on the house that Yuki moved into. And that's why he doesn't remember shit. I'm just saying, you know, and, but Yuki is the special and he's fine. Forgot a lot, but he's fine. Um, but you know, and so that'll kind of tie into the next time we see Orion, which probably won't actually be for a while to be dead honest with you. It's going to be later on in the series, but we'll get a little bit more of into Orion and probably just kind of rehash that he kind of helps them with all this stuff. This is like, the most boring fucking episode. <laughs> We've literally just watched fucking Abel freaking playing on the computer. Like, I just wanted entertain like something, but look, I guess you're just staring at Abel, but you're listening to the story, and hopefully that's enough entertainment for you. Uh, because, you know, I gotta check off what I told you, because otherwise I'm not gonna remember. Um, Anyway, hopefully shit happens as opposed to... Oh my god, you're gonna... Uh -huh. At least you're cooking repeatedly. Like, ugh, you're so beautiful. I love those tattoos, I really do. Like the oceany ones and the pirate ones. Like, I just love them. They're great. The jellyfish. They like so, like... I mean, like, it's so pretty. The pirate ship with the kraken. But then you got your jelly... I mean, you know, because you're like a merboy, so it like works perfectly. And the mm -hmm. seahorse, you got your mermaid over here, which is kind of what you mm -hmm. are. The waves. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Your pirate arm. And the compass and everything. It's just like, I just really like them. I appreciate them. Like, it's hard because like when you... Okay, you're actually going to eat that. Thank God. What the fuck? Were you making all this shit? Like, while I wasn't paying attention? Because we were over there with Abel? Oh my fucking god. My good lord. Why don't you come here and... um? No, that's not what I wanted. I was cooking you. Come over here and... Tell a gross joke. Brighten his day. Tell a folk tale about the man in a big hat. Yamachan? fuck is Yamachan? Why is Yamachan like a choice? Yamachan seems too close. Anyway. <laughs> you better still be eating. You're not that hungry anymore. Anyway. Um, I mean, you have a lot of tattoos and like, I have tons of tattoos and people make them, but a lot of time they're like, I don't know, I just, you don't have a lot of piratey ones. <laughs> I just really like these ones. 
<laughs> Look, I like the pirate aesthetic, okay? Um. Oh, anyway, so Cyrus's kind of thing we were going to get into while I am trying to talk about open-mindedness. Get to know. Where are you going? He just peaced out on you. You're trying to get your social up, but it's not working. He's like, wow, your lectures. Um... Yeah, so it's kind of like the Lachlan thing. So his issue kind of with Lachlan kind of stems also they without revealing too much about Cyrus's past, which we'll kind of get more into. See, that should have come first and then but like it just I look, okay. Okay, sweetie, could you not? Um he's like, he's obviously friendly with most people, you know, and it's not like he's not friendly with Lachlan, but he is a little wary of Lachlan because Lachlan's so outgoing and happy and like everything, despite the fact that, you know, Cyrus knows like you're basically trapped by Gail's family. Like Gail's family only helped your mother. So she would basically serve them for the rest of her life and then when she died that passed on to you you're basically their freaking like indentured servant here like they're kind of in similar situations in a way but Cyrus chooses to be here um with Abel like he knows he can leave whenever he wants and Abel's not going to stop him Abel kind of helps him in a way takes care of him and because cyrus is very like he's not really it's not necessarily lazy like everyone thinks he's lazy but there's kind of more to it than that but that's for later in the series um and he i think can identify with like lachlan and the things that he's going through and living through um and also again he does a lot of the shit around the house the cooking and the cleaning and taking care of abel but Abel does still take care of him too. It's a partnership. You know what I mean? They have a friendship. They have a camaraderie and everything. And Cyrus is free to do whatever he wants. Cyrus, I'm going to need you to take a shower or some shit. Okay. Not playing the computer. We need to get rid of this computer because it's all you fuckers do. So, you know, but he kind of, I think his issue is that Lachlan is held. He's like a captive, you know, by Gail's family. You know, I never realized that the shower had a step up. In this house. What in the hell is happening with your tail? That is not, that is disturbing as fuck. That is not how you were supposed to look. Actually, maybe it's supposed to hang out in the bag and it's just like being weird because of like being in the bathtub. I mean, that's not normal, but did you not finish eating? Anyway, um, so, yeah, I mean, he's, like, Lachlan's a captive, basically. And Cyrus kind of, I mean, understands that. Um, but he doesn't understand why Lachlan would stay. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't, un he doesn't get that. He's like, why are you happy there? Why aren't you trying to get out of this? Like... And it's, like, he doesn't, like, Cyrus doesn't see that Lachlan is not being treated badly, that, like, Lachlan and Gale actually get along, you know? And Cyrus has kind of never straight up said, like, why the fuck don't you leave? You're basically being held captive. Why the fuck don't you fight to get out? Like, he's so adamant and angry about it. And, like, Lachlan doesn't understand, like, like he can sense Cyrus is, like... Just like, you know what? Just, but he doesn't specifically like yell about like, I mean, he's kind of hinted at it and made kind of suggestive comments. Like, you know, you could just leave. You're not, you, you're powerful enough to just like leave. Right. Like what? But Lachlan just like kind of shrugs it off and doesn't say anything. And he, like, so like, they're not actually communicating. So, like, Cyrus wants to be like, why the fuck don't you leave? You are powerful. You could just kick his ass and fucking get your freedom. Like, why don't you do this? 
Like, why are you just staying a prisoner like this? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And, like, everyone else is like, I mean, okay, this is the way it is. And, like, they don't really say anything. Like, even, like, Abel doesn't say anything like, uh, Lachlan, why don't you leave? Because he's like, it's not, like, it's Lachlan's choice what he does with his life. And I feel like Abel is like, okay. Like, Lachlan doesn't look miserable. And everyone else is like, well, Lachlan's not unhappy. He's fine with his life. So, like, whatever. And, like, but Cyrus is the only one, especially to Abel, who gets just really kind of angry about it. Anytime he's around and, like, Lachlan's there, especially with Gail, and, like, Cyrus just gets upset about it. And, like, (laughs) the only person he would really, like, vent to about it is Abel. But he doesn't show how angry he is, but Abel knows. Like, he would just be like, I don't understand why he just doesn't fight and leave. And Abel's like, you need to, like, just worry about yourself. Like, don't, you know, do you say this to him? Do you ask him? Like, maybe you should just ask him. Maybe you should calmly ask him because it's his choice what he's doing, right? So Cyrus doesn't get, like, why don't you fight and leave? And, like, he's got this kind of, like, attitude. And, like, Lachlan could kind of sense the attitude and kind of, but he doesn't understand why Cyrus is so upset like and so just meh about it when he's around Gale like you know what I mean like when Gale and Lachlan are around Cyrus <laughs> that's when he really gets kind of like <laughs> about the whole situation and like <laughs> l- like Lachlan being like oh hey Gale did you need something I'll get it for you even though he does the same thing like Cyrus does the same thing for Abel. So like in Lachlan's mind, he's watching this like, you do the same shit for Abel. You take care of the house and all the shit that I do for Gail. Like, why are you so mad that I do this? Like, so they don't understand each other, but it's because they also don't come in. Like Cyrus doesn't straight up and go, so Lachlan, why the fuck don't you fight and leave? And then Lachlan would be like, this is why, which we'll find out when we go back to Lachlan. We'll give you his like side of this whole thing. And then Lachlan would be like, why does it bother you so much? And then Cyrus would be like, this is why it bothers me so much. But we're not going to tell you that now. We're going to say that for later. <laughs> Technically, that little backstory about Cyrus's life kind of should have come before I was going to split this up, like in multiple parts with them. Like there is like Cyrus's kind of backstory, like why he's so annoyed by this um, would have come first. And then we would have been like, this is the... But then it's like... I'd have to go through that. And then we'd have to go back to like... But then we'd have to do this part again so we can be like... They, all like what we just said, like, why he's so upset about Lachlan. To then go back to Lachlan and be like, this is why Lachlan doesn't, like, fight and leave. And, like, this is Lachlan's piece of that story. So I was like, well, fuck, it's not going to align if we do this. But we did Lachlan first before we do, like, Cyrus is upset about... Look, I didn't think that through, okay? It was just because I think we did um, Gale and everything first, and then we kind of, like, it, it's just the way I kind of did it. I was like, ah, fuck. Look, I fell out of order. It's my own fault, so we just had to rearrange some things. But now, you know, Cyrus has got some serious, like, deep-seated issues with things, and we just don't know what that little secret is he's holding. Are you flirting? <laughs> Are you flirting with another man? You have a boyfriend. You whore. I mean... Oh, he hates Megumi. That's great. And Shina. Or Sheena? Shayna? Shayna. Shayna, whatever. The only person you really love is Yuki, though. I mean, you got a little flirty with Gail, but I mean, like, who doesn't get flirty with Gail? Gail's pretty flirty and attractive, I mean. Gail is, like, everybody's girlfriend, like... It's funny that you have a decent relationship with Raiden. It's because Raiden doesn't remember shit. (laughs) Oh my god. And I love the fact that they never left the house. Like, I mean. But yes, so we'll get into uh, Cyrus's kind of... I'm going to mark these off that I kind of told you. And so I kind of rearranged the numbers, so... Yeah, we'll have to give you his kind of more backstory the next time we come into here. And then we've got a little bit more about it. So we got one more episode with these boys, like, later on in the series. Um, We're going to be with Yuki a little bit, and then we'll kind of go through. I kind of have it sort of planned out. We might rearrange things, but... 
Oh, actually, yes, we'll go alone because I don't know if that's broken still. I, have tr- I'm not, I don't trust the game. Um, but we'll do a couple episodes with Yuki like we normally do. Uh, we got to visit Magnus. We have Aslan we haven't gone to. We'll pop in and visit Merlin even though he has no backstory. We'll just hang out with him for a little bit. So it might be a shorter episode. I don't know. Again, he was a side character we just threw in. But like, I spent a lot of time on his like vampire form. We have to see it. You know what I mean? <laughs> he cracks me up. Um, insult yard. That's rude. Have a deep conversation. Talk about cooking. The humor and hijinks festival isn't okay. Like, so remember, like Salem is actually the oldest uh spirit. But we don't. Like, nobody really knows that. Like, I think... Like, Cyrus probably knows. Um, but... Uh, Cyrus obviously knows because he knows everything that Abel knows. Like, Abel doesn't really hide anything from Cyrus, and they kind of know him, but I actually don't think Cyrus knows Salem. I don't know if they've ever met. Well, he knows Wesley, Magnus, Nikolai, Salem. Yeah, no, he knows Salem. Do you not know Wesley and Nikolai? What in the world have you been doing? You don't know... You should know everybody. Well, it's just because I added them after the fact. Like, obviously, you know Gale, Orion. How do you not know Lachlan? Oh, there he is. He's just shirtless in this picture. I was like, where the fuck? I'm like, I made, I introduced them all to each other. Because again, Cyrus, Abel, Gale, Lachlan, and Orion were just the OG five. It was just going to be them. Because we were going to use Forgotten Hollow and use the mod and everything before this world came out. So so they were the ones and then like I added the extra characters while we were waiting so like you know Salem Wesley Magnus Aslan didn't ex- and Nikolai didn't exist at all originally I just kind of made them afterward because I was like we got time and I was having well, I'll just keep making them um, and then Merlin didn't exist before we started the series I made him like a couple episodes in I was like we need a yeti running through the snowy background <laughs> He doesn't have a story at all. Like, Merlin is our amnesiac. You can't have a game or a story. Like, we learned this from playing Atome games. You don't have... You can, somebody has to have amnesia. So there you go. I mean, aside from... Well, I guess Yuki and Raiden, technically, but... Look, no. Merlin is just Merlin. We don't know what his story is. He doesn't have one. Okay, so it's just the way it goes, but... But, yeah. But yeah, like, Abel knows that Salem is the oldest. and Because, I mean, we kind of went through Salem's story that he's, like, he was in love with the OG spellcat, like, the original evil spellcaster, the one that was, like, started the war and all that. He was kind of in love with their wife. And, like, you know. You know. Kind of had a little bit of a hand in this. I mean, it's not entirely his fault, but, you know. He didn't help things by having an affair, right? But, you know. So, he's been around longer than everybody, because he was already old at that point, but, you know. Nobody else really knows about him and about his history, because they don't tell anyone, like, especially anybody else that knows him, they just, okay, he's new in town, whatever, they don't know how old he is, so like, Gale, Lachlan, everybody thinks Cyrus is the oldest spellcaster, I mean, spellcaster, or the oldest spirit. Because if Abel and Cyrus were like, well, actually, Salem is, then they'd want to know, oh, really? How long? And then they might put the piece, and they, like, Salem is trying to keep that kind of quiet, like, you know, like, like I just don't really want to talk about the fact that, like, that was kind of my fault. Because he still has guilt from it, you know? So, so Abel's like, again, I don't necessarily know if Cyrus knows or Cyrus is just like, uh-huh. I know, but nobody specifically told me. I feel like Cyrus is that character. Like, he's that person that, like, they don't have to tell him specifically, like, things. He just kind of knows. He gets the hint. Like, like, you know, Abel could just, like, they could just be, like, sitting there, and he's like, ah, uh, okay, got it. And they're like, we didn't, yeah, nope, figured it out. Like, like, he just, 
understands without knowing, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, it's not like Abel or Salem were like, oh, he's the oldest and, like, this should happen and this is why he doesn't talk about it. It's kind of like, yeah, there's some things and he just kind of... I get it. You don't have to tell me. I get it. Like, he just can figure these things out and then it's just easier for him he's like just don't actually tell me because then when people ask me i don't have to lie i can just be like i don't know i really don't i i do but i don't <laughs> you know it's easier like i think he knows what abel is doing with the artifacts and stuff but he also doesn't because like abel has never specifically told him like oh yeah i'm going around and i'm stealing all these and i'm hiding them and i keep there but Cyrus, this like, thing, understands yeah. that this is what he's doing. He knows. But he doesn't say anything, and they don't say anything to each other, because it's, like, plausible deniability. If any, like, spellcaster came banging on the door and was, like, talking to Cyrus and, like, Abel is doing all this, he'd be like, I know nothing about it. He really does know nothing about it. He knows, but he doesn't. Like, <laughs> it's easier for him, too. He's like, I can just say I don't know, and people will leave me alone, and they'll believe that I don't know, even though I understand what's happening. I just don't want to know, you know? So. We said no a lot, you know? Right? You know, you know? I know, you know, you know? <laughs> right? Right, you know, right, right, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. They did not do anything, though. Like, I really expected, like, okay, I'm going to try to tell the story, but there's so much stuff is going to happen, and we're going to get distracted, and I'm not, even though I don't have a lot to share, but, like, this is where we are. Like, hey, please stop screaming. You have no reason to scream. Stop it. But, no, we're, at least they're talking, usually, but, like, the first 20 minutes, Abel just staring at the computer while I'm telling you the story. I mean... I mean, I hope you're at least entertained by the story enough that it's not like, well, this is boring. He's just playing on the computer. You know. That's that's why we have story time, you know? You guys are just going to stand out here and talk? Can we go through this a little bit faster? Can we, like, bring Cyrus here? To come over here and, like... Give him a compliment? Why don't you come over and talk, too? Like... Cause then at least it's three people chatting. Oh, Lampima. So, so. Tell a dramatic story. So, so. Bright and day. Okay. They're all wearing like black. So. Jesus. I mean, you know, it's just funny they blend too much. And he's got secret purple socks. This is not thrilling anymore. Like, I got nothing else to share, so it's like... I mean, I guess technically it's slightly, like, under the 40 minutes. We sometimes go 40 to 45 minutes, but, like... And now he's tired. Of course he's tired. He should be, like, narcoleptic, but... Um, but here we are! Anyway, that's kind of all their stories. I don't really have much else to share with them. We'll be with... Yuki later this week. Um, that guy just fell in the background. That's pretty funny. Hey, you know who hasn't walked around? Elphaba or uh, Simeon. Wait. Nope, not in the background. They really are only doing that for Yuki. They're always in the background of everything. But it's still kind of rare that even in one of these, they're not in the background somewhere. I mean, they might have been. I just was staring at Abel playing on the computer, so we didn't see them. But... I like how they... What are you doing? Chatting. We could put you in your winter wear. Why are you the only one that's cold? Um, I don't want him to freeze to death while he's out here, so we'll just put you in your winter outfit. Anyway, so I'll wrap this part up here. We'll be with Yuki when we come back in the next parts. Um, but like I said, we're probably going to do like two episodes with Yuki and then one of the others and then like whatever unless I kind of want to shorten up the timeline um but we're probably about halfway through that should get us to the way I've kind of currently planned it to be like 40 parts and that'll be kind of the end but I guess it really depends like if I go through it I'm like okay so I did Yuki and then like okay maybe we'll do something maybe I'll change things and we'll bump it up and make it a little bit shorter I don't know uh, we don't have too much. Like, we still got to get through Magnus, Aslan, Merlin. We got to get one more Orion. But when we get to the end, um, 
example. Bill. I've kind of done it like we'll do we'll like, say, forward. Orion, then Yuki. Then we'll go back to Gail's okay. house. We'll do Yuki we'll again. Do then we come back Yuki. to these guys, and then we do a two with Yuki. So there's going to be a point where the, la the main crew, it's going to be like every other episode type of a thing. But I can still technically do that now. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, my plan right now is... Two episodes with Yuki, then we do like Magnus, two with Yuki, then we go to Aslan, two with Yuki, Merlin, two with Yuki, and then we start doing the, that's when we condense it more, and it's like every other episode is Yuki, and then one of these main households um, to kind of bring everything out, so. Uh, but we'll see. Like I said, we'll see who knows. Maybe I want to change it up a little bit. Um... And did he just go in his house and go to, like, to bed? Where the hell did he go? He, like, disappeared. Like, legit, where is he? That's the cat. But, like, where the fuck did Salem go? Anyway, uh, yeah, I have no idea where Salem fucking went. Like... He invited us over. We were, I was just telling that, and he just fucking disappeared. That's Cyrus walking home. Where the hell did he go? I have no idea. Oh, there he is. <laughs> he, like, ditched us to fucking come over here and go fucking skiing. I mean, sledding. What the fuck, Salem? That's rude. He's so funny. Anyway, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens um, if we, you know, condense it a little bit more and just do every other episode with Yuki. Uh, he's kind of got everything he needs. We do need to bring Raiden back to life, but, like, when are we going to do it? I don't know. So, anyway, um, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Oh.